Now, going back to um, a kidnap, we had some scenes without giving out spoilers um, because it is a psychological thriller and there is a bit of violence in there. You yes. know me, like a bit of blood. Uh, and we had a great makeup yeah. artist turn up, Anne Marie. What did you uh, think of the violent scenes? Um, I loved it. The makeup was fantastic. And I'm not just saying that because she lives just down the road. Oh, this guy. No, it was, yeah, I thought it was really good. I loved the, the picture that we did at the end. Yeah. That was great. I think uh, it's nice to have, when you've been working hard and, and filming, when the film starts to change and come to sort of conclusion, as long as the violence is in context, you're not just throwing it in for no reason. Um, I think it's quite exciting, isn't it? You, you look forward to it. Yeah, I've seen a few films recently on Netflix where it's just like, was that violence really necessary? <laughs> what, for, what film's that? Give us an example, Paul. Uh, oh, God. I th- th- there's a couple of them, actually, that just... They were great films, but I just think they just took it to the extreme. Um, one of them was... Oh, God, I forgot what it was called. Uh, the, the one with the vampires in. Did you see that, the vampires on the plane? Oh, the, is this... Uh, I haven't seen it yet. No, is it any good? It was good, but I think they just ended up with too many vampires. Yeah. I, just think, I think if they'd have just kept one... Maybe two. I don't want to say too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been a better film. It was a good. It was a good film. Yeah. I just. Think it. Yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> it's doing it in the right way, isn't it? Because I think they were doing like a vampires, snakes on the plane. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it weren't snakes on the plane. It was vampires on the plane. <laughs> But Samuel L. Jackson can get away with that, can't he? He can get away with over the top because he's such a good actor. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, you've got to be careful. And I think the violence in our film, um, I think, was done just at the right time. Um, because the difficulty I had when I was writing it is you're in two rooms um, and you've almost got to try and keep it interesting it's so, it'd be so easy to watch that's one thing you can say about the film it continually moves the first yeah. thing i thought when i was writing it is if i just write something it's just a conversation people will get bored so you almost so it has to be like um who said it i can't remember who said it um but it was up and down up and down up and down so you've got some real you know exciting stuff then you can have a conversation then some exciting but if you don't have that you can get bored quite easily. You can see how it happens, can't you? Yeah. It was, yeah, some of the scenes, it's, it feels like such a long time ago. I'm struggling yeah. to remember it, but when when we watch it, it'll all come flooding back to me. Yeah. Um, just got vague recollections as like some of the scenes that we did outside in the corridor, I just remember being really tense and then it'd just be like, go we'd go back into the other room and it'd be like a little bit of a breather and a bit of a sigh of relief. And then we'd end up back in the other room. We'd jump back through there and then like the tensions would rise again. And yeah, it's yeah. I don't, hard to say stuff without spoiling the film. Yeah. Yeah. True. And I think that's why I enjoyed it. I enjoyed shooting it is when we do our next one, there's definitely going to be that element because I like the way you've got that. Well, one is you can keep it low budget. Mm. Um, and two is the audience feel quite claustrophobic as well. But you've got to get the, you've got to get the story right. So I'm looking forward to doing no. to doing the next one. We've just got to find a location. Um, when are we doing it? Eh? When? when? I'm trying it? to write it. Give me chance, man. <laughs> <laughs> you write it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so hopefully early next year we can, if we can find the uh, location and also I'm trying to get another producer on board, someone that can help us because I think when we're filming, 
um, you want to just concentrate on the filming. Whereas sometimes I'm thinking, oh, what about this? What about that? And it'd be great to have someone there that's in control of that. And I've said this before, producers, it's a, it's a bloody hard job because they are in control of everything. It's not just the finance. People think finance, but it's looking yeah. after the team, isn't it? You're like a team manager, if you like. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> I've done it. I've had to do it, but I wouldn't want to do it properly. You've got to be a special person, haven't you? Yeah. It's always good having somebody keep you on track, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's important to to keep keep sort of on track. Um, but yeah, it, it it worked out well, and I think people will be impressed for what we did uh, with what we did. I think people will be be in the time frame that we did it in. In the time frame is no one can moan about that. Um, and we made a feature film, which is mm. which is which amazing. Was, you came to me in the pub. Want to make a feature film in three days in two rooms? <laughs> You're mad, but we did it. <laughs> I think the other thing is as well. Short films are great, but I think there's sort of art of in a feature film, isn't there? It's good to have an hour and a half. It, yeah, it feels like you've you've been We've through done it. A lot of short films over the years, haven't we? We must have done about like five of them. Mm. Yeah, but when you do a feature. And you know, you know. We, currently, it's out for distribution. There's a lot going on with that because it's a bit of a minefield. But if we can't get a distributor, then I'll distribute it myself on Amazon for free, on YouTube for free. So it'll get out there. Um, yeah. It'd just be nice to make some out of it. But but if it doesn't, it'll get out there and people will see it and hopefully pirate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you made it, don't you? When it comes on Pirate Bay, you know it's on Pirate Bay. Yes, whereas a lot of people wouldn't be happy if it was on Pirate Bay, like Quentin Tarantino and that. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting. I think. Tell me as well, Paul. Obviously, you're in Stratford now, but you're a Midlands guy as well. Tell me about filmmaking in the Midlands, do you think it's important? Because I, I always, I'm a big advocate of trying to keep it in the Midlands and I think we quite enjoy that. Is that something I, I, you enjoy? Yeah, yeah. I think it's in, important to keep it sort of local, really. It, where, you know, where mm. it's relevant and we can. Um, and I think, you know, we, hopefully once all this is sort of sorted itself out that's going on in the world, we can do a lot more of it between the two of us and, you know, try and champion it a little bit more. It's because it's been a bit difficult over the past sort of year or so, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It has. But it, it would be good because in, in, in the Midlands, there's not that much. I spoke to the guys at Birmingham Film Festival and they're trying to do a great job with the new... Pardon? You know what else has been nice is seeing um, Tom Cruise... In Birmingham, yeah, um, and just him doing like, was it Mission Impossible Seven? Yeah, I can't remember what number they're on now. There's too many. Of them. <laughs> There's that many. Just you know, stuff like that happening around the local area um, has been quite nice. It's, I wanted to get to Birmingham when he was there, but it's just too much work on. <laughs> yeah, I did as well at Grand Central, but I was going to go over on my bike, but I never did. But um, a friend of mine, he lives near uh, Midlands Airport and he saw Tom Cruise in his helicopter come down. Apparently, they landed in someone's garden. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, do you mind if I land in your garden, ma'am? <laughs> yeah, I heard about that on the news. Yeah, got to gotta love in, Tom Cruise. In his garden. Mm. It's but, crazy. It, but like you say, it's all good. We've got, like you say, Birmingham Film Festival. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the film, we can get it in there. I might have been a bit late, but we never know. Um, and there's uh, Birmingham, um, I can't remember what it's called, but they look at locations. There's a lady that deals with that, and she's trying to bring in more, because we had, um, what was the film? There's been a couple of films, Steven Spielberg film. Was it Ready Player One? or? Uh, yeah, yeah some not... of that was filmed in Birmingham, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really, you know, 
a good a good thing because we've got been so, shot around here recently, but yeah, we've got. And the other thing was as well when I was filming the drone shots out in the countryside, the countryside and like the forest when we filmed it on our own in the woods before, they're yeah, great, that, aren't they? Great location that was. That those woods. Yeah, and the good thing is, well. Mind. There's the bad thing is that if it rains and you you covered in stingers, but the good thing is you hardly see anyone and you can just get on with it. Yeah, uh, that's good. I mean, Tied you to the tree, didn't we? Shame me to the tree. Yeah, that was when I realised I really don't want to act anymore. When I was getting beaten and <laughs> chained to, chained to a tree, I was like, mm, "This is I want to be behind the camera." <laughs> Was that the moment of realisation for you then? I realised it a long time ago. I think we had an actor turn, didn't turn up or something, so I did it. But it's, um, I think, and that's the other thing, I appreciate the the actors, the fearlessness. They are quite fearless, aren't they? You're a good actor, you were. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just can't do it. I just can't. Next one. I do a cameo. Yeah, yeah, might do. As the caretaker. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and someone that's not going to make it, unfortunately, is Daniel. Um, because he is uh, away um, is filming. He's doing quite well now. His career's doing well. He's a great, great actor. Um, so, yeah, let's just, let's just touch on some of the, on the actors. So Daniel came in, he did come up, he was at the Midlands, he came up from London. He played um, the psychopathic security guard really well and his audition tape blew us away, didn't he? Oh, you froze. You froze, Paul. Edit, edit. Edit. Oh, you froze then. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. You froze then. I know. My my internet went a bit weird. Who are you with? Who are you with? No, my internet's a bit uh, odd. Um, I'm with BT. Oh. Um, oh I'll let it that out. Seems all right now. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Possibly. It's it's glowing orange. It should be blue. It's glowing orange. Sure, it's fine. Everything looks good anyway. Okay. We'll, I'll just edit it out. Right. Um, so, yeah, let's just quickly talk about the actors. We'll try and talk about as many people as we can, the cast and crew, but the actors were, are on the screen. So, Daniel Jordan, he came up. He wasn't Midlands, actually. He came up from London. Um, and you saw his audition, it just blew us away, didn't it? His audition tape it was fantastic, I love that, yeah. And I think these yeah, actors, intense. but yeah, he was fantastic, he was great. And he can't make it, unfortunately, because he's doing really well, his career's taken off and he's filming. Um, but he was just one of these actors, you, you talk to him, nice guy, and then when the cameras rolled, and his improv was really good as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Tell us, was, tell us a bit about when he improved. We started pissing ourselves. Too. <laughs> I just remember a lot of laughing. I can't remember what we were laughing at, but I just remember the. I just remember the whole thing, whole experience with him was great. And the thing is, you're trying to hold the camera. I know it's a steady cam, but he's, you, you're laughing and you're thinking this is great. But wobble when there's that much intense laughter and you're trying to keep it silent yeah um then we've got jacob jacob cottrell he played uh lou he was great uh young lad just starting out i don't know if he wants to carry on acting but he should do he, he, he was great because he had to act injured all through the film didn't he what did you think of him yeah he was good we had to, we, we all had a good laugh with all of them they're all yeah. fantastic I think that's the key as well. When you're making something like that, you've got to you've got to have a laugh. We uh, only spent three days together. Well, I only spent three days with them. Really, yeah. you've spent a few more getting yeah. to know them. 
the first time I met everybody really was we had some rehearsals we had a couple of rehearsals didn't we yeah um and you know we all we all gelled as a group didn't we quite well i think yeah and it, you've got you to know, get on you've got to we, get we all got on we all had a laugh and we all had a good time i think whilst we were doing it and yeah that's all that matters at the end of the day isn't it if when we're doing stuff like that definitely uh, El- eloise Eloise you, she's doing well as well now, young actress. She was great as well, the youngest one of the team, weren't she? Yeah, she was good as well. And T. Yeah, um, then we've got T, T Birmingham lad, T. Love T. He's, uh, I don't know if Eloise is coming to the Premier, Jacob is, T is. Um, but T was, a di- he had a really difficult uh, role because he, in it the kidnappers there's two women and there's him Tuco and he sort of had to lead the women where they were manipulating him um so and he was perfect when we auditioned him yeah he was he he was he was great and the other thing is as well with all these actors actors and actresses we could just give them direction they just go for it you know um and we just let them get on with it, and it worked, didn't it? Thank God. And then we've got Imogen, our blondie, psychopath. That was an interesting one, wasn't it? Yeah. Some of the scenes were quite intense. For her, yeah. She really had to, really had to go there. So... Imogen was great. The great story, she plays Blondie. The great story about Imogen was when she came in for the audition with me and Abby, um, she auditioned for Angel and she left and I said to Abby, she seems like she's got a bit of attitude. So I think, you know, and I said, she could be a great, great Blondie. Now, not bigging me up for casting brilliantly, but <laughs> she was great, wasn't she? She was fantastic, yeah. That, um, there was a few scenes that, you know, Ended up being pretty tense, but she pulled them off perfectly. Yeah. Uh, and then I feel when I, they've read the script, they like the script, they like the story, which is great. But I do, some of the scenes I really put them through and I feel really bad. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry I'm making you do this. <laughs> but it but it works. And then we've got brilliant Molly as well. Yeah. Um, bless her. She came in as, as Angel and she was... She was great as well, bless her. Um, I won't say too much about what happens to her in the film, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> what? I remember how it happened now. <laughs> oh, do you remember? Right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, all a very talented, um, a talented bunch and I think that's going to be the big thing is when we do our next film is, is trying to cast and, and get another great, talented uh, talented bunch. Because it does make a big difference, doesn't it? A lot for you, cameraman. How how does it make a difference when you've got good actors, Paul? It just makes it easier. You know, to just... If you've got somebody that knows what they're doing on the other side of the camera, it just makes your job behind the camera a hundred times easier. You know, whether if filming car sales executives like I used to, <laughs> some of them knew what they were doing. Some of them used to, it's like most people, you stick. To-